This episode of TechZilla is brought to you by T-Mobile and the Samsung Galaxy S3. Are your hard drives killing your NAS box? Alan Malventano is the storage editor at PCPer.com and in a previous life built gigantic storage area networks. We like to call them SANS. And he says if you're using regular consumer drives in a large array, there are some very simple and likely scenarios that can cause it to completely fail. Welcome to the show, Alan. Thanks for having me. Hey, I, uh, we, we should talk. You actually, I, I, I believe you mentioned petabytes of SSDs in, in, a, in a gigantic uh, SAN you built at a previous no, job? No, no, no. The biggest one I built uh, recently was uh, a quarter of a or a quarter of a petabyte. A, a mere quarter of a, a petabyte? A mere quarter. Yes, how, how many terabytes is a quarter of a petabyte? This is like 250. <laughs> That's a big drive, dude. <laughs> So we should talk about uh, Western Digital Red 3 terabyte SATA SOHO NAS drives. Um, after reading your review of, of the, the WD Red drives, all I could think of is like the green drives in my RAID suck, huh? I mean, is that a fair, is that a fair assessment? Should we all be running out and replacing our, our green drives and our, our Drobos, our RAIDs, our, our NAS boxes? I, well, there's a few precautions you can sort of do if you already have green drives. I, I had so many people email me after. Right. After I published that piece, they were just like, oh my God, should I, I just bought these and, you know. Um, I would say that if you're on the market for them now, mm -hmm. yes, it's a smarter way to go. Uh, I wouldn't say like, oh my God, the sky is falling and, you know, run out and like throw your greens off the roof and, <laughs> and do that sort of thing. So the biggest difference between the red drives and the regular consumer drives, whether they're the, the, you know, the, the black or the green label is TLUR, time limited error recovery. What makes that so important? Okay, so time limit error recovery is a feature that was previously exclusive only to enterprise class drives mm -hmm. that uh, Western Digital and other companies have made. Um, and those would be the RAID edition, the RE series drives that have been out there. Um, and that's a feature where uh, when a drive runs into a bad sector, it usually does everything it can to try to error correct or reread the sector a bunch of times and basically just try to give you the data that you wanted because that's the hard drive's primary duty, right? Right. Um, so time-limited error recovery takes into consideration that the drive might be in an array, some form of a RAID. So when you do something like that with any hard drive, when you put it in a RAID, the, the RAID controller is now sort of the middleman. So it's not like you're just asking the hard drive for data, you're asking the RAID controller for data, it's in turn asking the hard drive. So because you have a, a link in the middle of the chain there, uh, the RAID card has an obligation to turn that data around faster. So you need a hard drive that's aware of where it is in the chain, and it, in turn, has to turn around the data faster. Otherwise, the RAID card will just pretend the whole drive disappeared. <laughs> that's a bad thing. That is a bad thing. And, um, and, and then it starts trying to restore the parity data from the other drives, and it just wastes a right. lot of time and energy right, in hard right. drives. You, you, get into, you force yourself into a process called a rebuild, mm -hmm. um, which actually sort of, if you have a, an array full of drives that do not implement TLER, um, you're just sort of rolling the dice there because if you had any bad sector on any other drive, that rebuild process is going to prompt you to run into those, and then those drives will in turn time out, and then all of a sudden your whole raid just went poof. That would be bad. Yeah, and that is a possible scenario. We've see, I've seen it happen to me a couple times. Uh, our editor in chief, Ryan Shroud, it's happened to him, God knows how many times. <laughs> well, a couple. It's kind of interesting because along with uh, TLER, uh, automatic dynamic balancing, and they're claiming. I think a million hours mean time between failure, something like 30%, right. 30, 30, 35% higher than, than an average hard drive. Right, and that's, um, and that's something that, it, so you don't, you don't see this kind of thing on, uh, just on specs, just by looking at specs, mm -hmm. but just by dealing with hard drives a lot and just seeing how they behave when you compare the, like, the reliability versus like the spindle speeds uh -huh. and the amount of noise they make, drives that tend to be really loud and seek really fast and have really high speed spindles, like 7200 RPM drives, they tend to run hotter mm -hmm. and they tend to fail earlier, just in general, just sort of like a, <laughs> sort of like a generalization, right? Um, right? These drives, they they went complete opposite end of the spectrum. So it's not just the, the mean time between failure that convinces me that they're pretty good, it's that the, the seeks are dead silent. The drive spinning idle on the table, you can't even tell. Like I, I almost have to lay my ear right on top of this drive to see that it's even operating. Um, and that includes while it's seeking. So it's it's just really really good. Um, Does that mean it's actually running slower than a than a, a caviar green drive? Yes, that is also true. The seeks are slower than the typical caviar green. The spin uh, green. Uh, the spindle speed is the same. Um, the throughput is actually faster because the platter density is higher on mm -hmm. this drive. So you end up seeing uh, at the beginning of the drive you see 150 meg per second, which is actually the the best throughput of any of the 5400 RPM drives. That's pretty amazing. So. 
It's about a, you said it's about a ten dollar vig if you're buying these versus a, a, a green dive. A, a one terabyte's one hundred nine, two terabytes one hundred twenty nine, three terabytes one hundred seventy nine. Right. You know, should I be thinking of upgrading these one by one in in my NAS box at home, or should I wait until I'm I'm ready to bump up to an entirely new set of drives? Uh, you could mix and match them. That's mm -hmm. um, you know the the more of them you have, the just the better probability that you know the bad sector on that one is not going to um, throw throw a wrench in the works, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, me personally, if I already had, I have a Drobo Pro sitting right next to me here, and it has a bunch of caviar greens in it, and they're all the same. Um, I don't intend on swapping those out until something happens to, you know, <laughs> one of those. Now, that said, um, that whole bad sector thing we were talking about, where you're prompting failures and everything, um, there's a way to check that. There's, there's a way to make sure that kind of thing doesn't happen to you. It's typically just called scrubbing. Mm -hmm. um, some RAID controllers actually have an option to do this automatically for you. They will periodically read all data front to back on all of the drives. Oh, wow. So that the idea is you find the bad sector then. You don't find it when you're in the middle of trying to rebuild after one of your drives already failed. That would be a good thing. So basically, I scrub the data, it marks the bad sectors, keeps data out of them, and I can use the hard drives for longer with more success? Right, but this is this is also the sort of thing that you want to have been doing from the beginning, right? <laughs> because the first time you do that, say you do have a couple of bad sectors on your drives, you might actually prompt that failure scenario we were just talking about. Got it. Right. The idea is to catch just the one sector that's bad when that happens. So if I'm if I'm populating a NAS box or building a RAID into a storage PC, go with the red drives, right? Pay the extra ten bucks for them. Yep. If I have a RAID that's already populated with greens or blacks or some other hard drive, just replace them as they go dead with red drives. <laughs> and in sure. the meantime, don't try to make anything better by starting scrubbing now if I haven't been scrubbing since the beginning of, of using that RAID. Yes, I would say if you have some sort of backup solution, just do like some form of a sync mm -hmm. first. Don't do it, just a copy of everything off of it. Copy um, that. Th that. That sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's just sort of a, a, like a maintenance, uh, typical maintenance thing. I would recommend doing data scrubbing even if you had an array full of reds, okay. honestly. It's, it's the best way to go, just a, a general raid maintenance sort of thing, if you have some form of option for that in the controller. And basically every different brand is going to have a slightly different name for scrubbing that data. Oh yeah, it's, I don't even <laughs> remember what Arika calls it, and that's the, the card I run in my main system. So what's coming up on PCPer.com, Alan? Any new SSDs you're excited about? Um, well, I'm still, my, my current recommendation is still the Samsung A30 series. Mm -hmm. That's still my current favorite. Um, uh, as far as coming up, I'm working on an update to the SSD decoder, which Ooh. actually doesn't have the A30 series in there yet. Um, that thing is just such a beast to upgrade, it's, uh, to update. Because, um, I don't know, I don't know if you've looked at the thing. It's, it's like a giant pages chart of, of SSDs. <laughs> right, and it's basically every model, everything, and the, the idea was, uh, it, used, it started out as my little tickler list of how do I figure out what all these drives are doing with which controller, and then people started asking me, and I said, okay, fine. So we just published it, and ever since, it's been up on the site for like three years now. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Alan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't, you should go there right now, PCPer.com, check out Alan's storage testing. There is some very, very good information there. There's more Techzilla coming right up. Before we do that, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. We want to thank Samsung Galaxy S3 by T-Mobile for making this episode of Techzilla possible. The S3 has great hardware, which lets Samsung add some really great apps that take advantage of the fast processor. Here's a cool feature that we really like, picture-in-picture -picture video. If I press this little icon right here, the video starts playing in a little box that I can move around. Now I can continue surfing the web or check my email while still watching my video. Pretty cool. When combined with T-Mobile's 4G network, the Galaxy S3 will let you do things you would have never imagined. In fact, this whole spot was shot on the S3 720p camera. Head over to this URL to learn more and maybe even win a phone or other Samsung product in their spin-to-win contest.